Hey guys, uh, welcome to the introduction of the tiny machine learning course for the Emirates systems. Now, uh, in this particular video, I'll just try to explain to you uh, why we are studying this particular subject and what's the need of studying the tiny version of machine learning when you might already know um, the big version of it. Uh, how is it uh, related with the embedded system and what is the need of this particular subject, okay? So I think uh, the three questions which are mentioned on the board, uh, what is SignML? Uh, why should you care for it? And if you do care, you do this course, uh, what would be the outcome of this particular experience? So starting with the first question, what is SignML? So I would expect that some of you might have seen some ML projects uh, or might have done some, or you know somebody who did. Uh, one thing you would have realized if you would have practiced machine learning at all or have seen somebody is that most of their systems have nowadays uh, eight gigabits RAM, uh, four GB sometimes, or especially for neural networks, you have four GB of dedicated graphic cards, um, mostly from NVIDIA or AMD systems. And these kind of configurations don't come cheap, okay? Or if you have went to any of the recent uh, events, uh, be it a uh, tech conference or be it a hackathon, you would have seen that most of the people who are trying to project something outside the screen, okay? I'm not talking about the projects that you can just reflect on your screen, something that uses some kind of hardware. Uh, most of them are just sensor-based projects. I mean, you would have your computer with a very powerful processing unit, okay? And your sensors through Arduino or Raspberry Pi will just connect to your computer. It will sense the data, the temperature, moistness, light, all those things, and just report it to the computer. The processor will do all the work and then it will go back to the particular system and it will reflect it. No doubt it's a good project if you're doing it very well. But the problem is that when you actually think about it, would you be, let's say, this is a very simple system for object detection, okay? So do you think that when you make a small drone, which uh, need to see whether an object is uh, ahead of it or not before checking to fly, would you be actually having this kind of a processor to run those systems? That is the key question here. That is why we need TinyML. The current machine learning systems are uh, extremely high demanding in terms of the compute power that we have, okay, that you can see from the RAM. Uh, the GPU and all of these things, uh, or basically the gigahertz processors that we need, which we overrun most of the time, then you need the memory that is required to process these things. That is the high RAM that you need, okay? And then you need a huge amount of storages. That is your ROM or your storage, okay? Most of you will use your hard drive or sometimes even SSD is available today. The thing is that your machines are well capable of doing the complex machine learning algorithms that are developing nowadays. But the thing is that you will not be able to put these things in the small chips, small uh, IoT devices, which are going to be there in the future. You really think that the smartwatch which I have is able to run all the machine learning algorithms in it just because it's a smartwatch? No, the, uh, the algorithms that we designed, they're extremely inefficient. They wouldn't be able to do all of this. So how do we make the algorithms, the machine learning tools that we are using with our major systems, the computers that you're watching this video on, uh, how do we make all of those things in a smaller chip, okay? Uh, one way is wait for 15 to 20 years, let the chips be more strong in that particular size, okay? Or the second way is make your softwares much more sleek, much more slim, much more faster, okay? So that is exactly what TinyML does. Uh, TinyML is basically the subject which you need to study to incorporate all the machine learning intelligence uh, algorithms that you have studied in a simple processor with just uh, some kilobytes of RAM and a couple of MBs of storage. You don't need GBs and TBs of storage and RAM to run machine learning algorithms. There are certain restrictions that you will have there, but that is what the subject is, okay? Uh, you should get from the embedded system component. If you know what an embedded system is, it's a little bit different from your uh, microprocessor. Your computer is basically a microprocessor which can does a lot of uh, advanced computation and is for a general purpose. Okay, you can do multiple things here. But uh, embedded systems are usually uh, mostly microcontrollers. Okay, 
for example there is a chip in your uh, smart watch there is a chip, uh, chip in your television there is a chip in your washing machine now they also have computing power but you cannot ask time uh, or you can't do basic calculations on uh, the chip that you have in your uh, washing machine and the reason for that is that it is designed for only one purpose and the thing is that as soon as you design anything for a single purpose the amount of data compute storage you need reduces down to a extreme extent so we will study how do we use machine learning in such kind of system in this particular course and that is why you should care for this now what's the need of having an embedded system when you have uh, this huge uh, computation system well the reason is very simple uh, as most of you already know uh, iot is on the rise and we will have multi trillion uh, devices for sensors and all of these things there will be sensors smaller than a rice grain so you can either just capture the data and put it on the cloud which is happening right now or you can do the entire computation then and there itself on that single microcontroller with the size of a grain of rice right so that is actually the need of machine learning uh, for those who know edge computing uh, tiny ml comes under that particular category uh, those who don't um, basically there are three levels of computing that we have today first is the cloud okay second is uh, the uppermost ground level at the sensors that's the edge computing okay at the edge of this thing and in between which handles both of them is called as fog computing it's basically the one which translates or transfers the data from the edges the sensors to the main cloud for the uh, computation okay and what happens today is that most of the computation happen here on the cloud the issue is not that we can't actually spend a lot uh, on the cloud definitely it will be costly but the issue is that the amount of uh, resources it captures just to communicate from thousands and thousands of sensors to the cloud is much higher than the money we have to spend for the compute so that is why people would actually prefer if the entire thing can happen just on that single chip instead of that chip sending the message to a central chip and then that goes to a cloud and then the processing happens here why not just do that particular processing that you require with this data then and there in that particular chip okay that is what basically tiny ml does and that is why you should care for it because uh, in the coming years the chips are going to be even smaller you will not be able to see a particular chip even if it's kept in front of you and uh, the thing is that those chips are capable enough to do these kind of algorithms which you are needing your system to do right now so if you are able to do these things most of the things today has uh, those kind of microcontrollers in it for example on an average a uh, decent uh, car has 20 to 30000 sensors today and it will increase right every single thing that you do based on your rpm your uh, petrol levels based on your movements based on your gps all of these things are being tracked and those things can actually improve the amount of uh, intelligence that we can actually provide to these systems especially when autonomous cars comes in they will have tons and tons of these kind of sensors okay uh finally what would you get from this particular course so um what our objective would be is that uh, to introduce you to the need of this particular thing there are a lot of challenges with this kind of technology today we will uh, introduce you to that particular thing uh we will work on tensor flow light okay this is the version google has developed for the tiny ml components to uh, program machine learning into those small embedded systems um after that we will try to add some of these into simple uh, microcontrollers like your arduino board okay so you will be able to uh, do the same projects as you are doing right now hopefully uh, with a much slimmer system for example right now if you let's say have an image recognition through a Uh, Arduino board. What you would have is that you would have a camera attached to the Arduino board. This data would be fetched. It will be transferred to your system. Your system will run either Python or uh, mostly MATLAB to do this particular processing. Okay. It will use the particular processor it has. All the computation will be done, and then you will actually reflect the result on your screen, or you will just announce it from a particular, let's say, speaker, whether it's a particular object or not. Right. the thing is that this kind of system you can't just walk in within your pockets but if the entire computation can be done within this system you don't need your laptops you can actually put these things on smaller devices like a simple drone or a simple remote controlled car and that car 
if you just need to put certain kind of controls you can actually make a small autonomous car with a simple arduino board you don't need a computer to done uh, do all of those things your arduino board would be capable enough to run these kind of algorithms okay so that is basically what we are uh, planning to do in this particular course uh, the length there is no uh, certain limit to it the initial uh, component should not be more than 2 to 4 hours okay uh, once we have been through that we will learn certain methods in 2 to 4 hours okay this part will be to introduce you to all the concept to basic tensor flow programming and so and then we will discuss some of the theory components how do you reduce a complex machine learning system into something which is much smaller okay so we will look into that particular thing there are certain methods to do that once this thing is done then we will go on to see some of the projects that the students who participated while we were preparing this particular course have developed with their arduino board and we'll see what kind of code they have done what kind of projects they have built uh, there are a lot of examples to this but uh, the thing is that you don't have any restriction as soon as you know how your arduino board can run uh, machine learning algorithms on itself you have uh, the sensors to capture images you have sensors for sensing the motion for capturing the speed temperature um, all of these things there are enough number of sensors for you to extract all of those things and since it's an autonomous system uh, these kind of things can just directly be put into work in a particular field in a particular location okay so that is what this particular course is about uh, interested people can just uh, go to the website or comment below if you have any doubts Thank you.